Hey everyone, I'm glad you're here and welcome back if you've been with me for a while. And if you're just now joining us, welcome to you as well. This is part two of all of the cut flowers that I grew from seed in 2022. And if you watched the cool flowers video, you saw all of the cool flowers that I grew from seed in 2022. And a lot of them I will be repeating here for 2023. Your warm season tender annuals are plants that you want to plant out after your last frost date. I'm in zone 6B and my last frost date is right around April 23rd. So you want to wait till the nighttime temperatures are right around 50 degrees Fahrenheit before you plant these out. I have my list here, so let's take a look at what I grew in 2022 from seed. If you watched the Cool Flowers video, you saw I explained uh, how, my, how my garden has evolved into a cut flower garden over the last couple years. So do go back and watch that one. But the things that I grew from seed, and these are things that I started indoors under my grow lights six weeks before my last frost date. So the first thing let's talk about is celosia. I grew several different uh, varieties of celosia. The spiky type. I grew a couple of different uh, colors of that. And I also grew the plume type. And I grew the coxcomb type of celosia. I think for 2023, the only two I will be growing is the plume type and the coxcomb type. However, the spiky type, and I really need to learn what the actual name of that is, uh, self-seeds itself all over the place, like the um, pink flamingo, I'll have that self-seeded everywhere, which is, I love it, it's great. But I'm, I think I'm going to really focus on the plume and the coxcomb type of uh, celosias for 2023. But I started those indoors under grow lights six weeks before my last frost date. Uh, let's talk about Gumfrina. I love Gumfrina so much. Gumfrina will always forever and ever have a place in my garden. Gumfrina, also known as Globe Amaranth, is great for an accent in your bouquets as well as drying. I mean, you cannot beat it as a dried flower. It just holds its color incredibly well. So Gumfrina is another one that I grew in 2022. Started from seed indoors and then transplanted out. Tall ageratum. I love tall ageratum. Now we're not talking about the little type, the shorter variety that you get in some of your garden centers, you know, you buy in the six packs. We're talking about the tall ageratum that gets about three feet uh, tall. I grew it in several large clay pots in 2022, and you really need to give it more space so that you can net it and uh, let it grow up straight because it tends to want to flop over, not flop over, but curl over just a little bit. But tall ageratum, definitely on the list again. I also grew Dusty Miller from seed. And for whatever reason, I don't have a picture of that, but trust me, I did grow it. It's so fun to watch that growing from seed. And then when the little seedlings just start getting so big, they start turning their dusty silver color. It's, I just love it. It's so fun, at least it was to me. The type of Dusty Miller I grew was a taller variety. So it's really good for your cut flower arrangements. Also really great for drying. Another thing that I loved growing in 2022 was the Victoria Blue Salvia. I like the perennial salvias, but I really love the annual salvias. I had several different types, but the only one I grew from seed was the Victoria Blue Salvia. Like that one a lot. I will repeat that. I also grew Hot Biscuits Amaranth in 2022. I love amaranth and so do the four lined plant bugs. They didn't really bother the blooms, but they did eat the leaves. Um, they just seem to love the, the foliage on the amaranth. So if you do decide to grow some amaranth, and there's many varieties of amaranth, if you do decide to grow some amaranth, you want to plant them away in a, in a specific area contained away from the rest of your garden so that the four lined plant bugs can stay with the amaranth and not bother everything else. Uh, I was able to harvest a lot of amaranth. I was able to use it in some autumn type arrangements just because of the autumn color of the hot biscuits. And I was able to dry a lot. So I really enjoyed having the amaranth. I will grow the amaranth again. I'm gonna grow a couple different varieties in 2023, but you just have to be aware that you will deal with the four line plant bugs on your amaranth. Now I did not notice it on my gumfrina, which is globe amaranth. 
they didn't bother that. But the other type of amaranth, they were pretty, pretty happy over. Another warm season tender annual that I grew from seed in 2022 was Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. And if I have a picture, I'm, I'm not looking at my pictures right now. If I have a picture, I'll throw it in here. For some reason, I, I'm not sure that I have a picture. I love it as a, um, as a filler more towards the autumn time. It grows very large. I mean, it can grow large, large. Um, so you want to give it plenty of space. I'm not sure if I'll grow mahogany splendor hibiscus. It looks like a little Japanese maple, really. Um, I'm not sure if I'll grow it again, but I may. I'm just going to give that some thought and try to find a space. I stuck it in a couple of other garden beds, not in my raised beds. And I'm going to try to find a space that kind of makes me happy. Uh, it was very happy, but I wasn't real happy with the space that it was in. I also love growing grains and uh, all kinds of grains and grasses and things like that. One of the things I grew in 2022 was limelight millet and I really, really enjoyed it. I loved uh, having it in fresh bouquets as well as drying it. It dries different, it can dry different colors depending on the stages that you harvest it. Um, it can dry and, and retain some of its greenish color if you harvest it at a certain time. And then if you harvest it at another time, it, uh, it turns brown when you're drying it, which is totally fine for me because it's a grain after all. So I, I love uh, growing the millet. I have another type of millet I'm growing for 2023 as well as the limelight. Really, really enjoyed that. Another grain I grew in 2022 to use for drying is blue wheat. And I was really excited and um, just, you know, curious to see what this would look like. I believe the seed was from Botanical Interest. And it kind of got a blue hue as it was growing. And then it turns kind of green. So uh, I would say it's not super blue, but it does have a blue hue. Once it dries, though, it looks just like dried wheat. So anyway, it doesn't hold that blue hue that it had, but still, a lot of fun. I enjoyed growing that. I also grew Cosmo. Of course, we all love Cosmo. The dainty, the dainty flowers, so pretty, blowing in the wind, the cottagey type flowers. The Cosmo usually is the only flower that I direct sow mostly. I'll direct sow some in different beds in my raised bed garden. Then I'll direct sow some in different areas and garden uh, garden beds in around the yard and property and things like that. So. I grew several varieties of Cosmo. I love it. I would love to grow it in long rows if I possibly could and just really let it shine, give it some uh, Hortanova netting and, and, and let it really shine and do its thing that way. I think that would be the, the ideal way of growing Cosmo. But if you want uh, to grow it as a cottagey look, you can just grow it in your flower beds and it does really beautifully. Like I said, I usually direct sow my Cosmo. The rest of the things that I have talked to you about, I always start indoors under grow lights six weeks before my last frost date. Now let's talk zinnia and sunflowers. Zinnia and sunflowers can be started, of course, can be directly sowed into your garden beds or into your uh, raised beds, whatever you grow in, into a container. But I usually like to start my zinnia and sunflowers indoors and I start those four weeks before my last frost date because their turnaround time is just like quick. Your zinnia is usually like a 75 day from seed to bloom. Your sunflowers, a lot of those are 50 to 60 days from seed to bloom. So that's why I like to start mine about four weeks before my last frost date or before the time that I'm going to be planting them out into the garden. The reason why I like to start mine indoors is mostly for slug pressure, to just keep the slugs from eating the seedlings, to give that seedling a good head start. However, you can certainly sow your zinnia and your sunflowers directly into your garden. So if you don't have an indoor setup and grow lights and things like that, please, by all means, don't not grow zinnia and sunflowers because of that reason. Just go ahead and direct sow them into your garden after the soil has warmed up. Zinnia varieties that I grew in 2022 would be the Queenie series, the Queen Lime Red, let's see, I've written down, the Queen Lime Peach, um, red, orange, yellow. I love all of those. The Queenie series will always be in my garden. 
uh, I found that they are less prone to the powdery mildew. I, I mean, everybody, if you have moisture in the air where you live, everybody's going to get powdery mildew on your zinnia at the end of the growing That's season. The reason why it's good to succession sow your zinnia. That way, if you do get the powdery mildew, then you can just pull those out and you, you'll have some coming on already. So zinnias are a really good thing to uh, succession sow. But the Queenie series will always have a place in my garden. I love them so much. Just ordered for 2023 uh, called Queenie Carmine and it's kind of a reddish peach, um, pinky color. I can't wait for it. I'm excited. I also grew the Zinderella series uh, for the first time in 2023. Zinderella lilac, Zinderella peach, I believe it was, Zinderella mix. I will not be growing the Zinderella uh, series again. I was just chatting with a friend on Instagram and she said the same thing. So I was like, oh, okay, I feel better now that I didn't care for the Zinderella. I didn't really get the double Zinderella uh, blooms very much, very many of them. They were mostly the flat zinnia. So I'm really not planning on growing those again. They just take up too much real estate uh, that I need for other things. I also grow Benary's Giants. I love the Benary's Giants. They do, you do need room for those. You do need space because they get really tall. But I love those, uh, the Benary's Giant Wine, the Benary's Giant Pink, Yellow, Red, um, Mick, you know, then you can get the mixed Benary's Giant of mixed colors. So I really love the Benary's Giants and the bloom head is very large, just as the name implies, Benary's Giants. So, I really enjoy those and I've had those for quite a few years. In 2022, I also grew one just kind of on a whim called Granny's Bouquet and I won't be growing that one again. Although they were lovely, they weren't good for a cut flower so I, I need the space for other things. In the past, I've grown uh, Cut and Come Again Zinnia. I won't I don't grow those again. I did not grow those in 2022. I've also grown the Oklahoma mix of zinnias. It's really nice. It's just a small little flower head and makes a nice little filler. I, I really probably will only stick to the Benary's Giants and the, um, the Queenie series though for my zinnias in 2023. And as far as sunflowers, the Pro Cuts are my favorites and also the Van Gogh's Fantasy that I grew from Sunflower Steve. They became my new favorite and I have two packs ready to go for 2023 of the Sunflower Steve uh, Sunflower. And then I'll make a purchase of whatever else he offers for 2023. But the Pro Cuts, you know, you can't go wrong with those. They don't shed any pollen. They are single stem sunflower. And uh, in 2022, I grew, let's see, Pro Cut Plum, Pro Cut Red, Pro Cut uh, Gold Light, Pro Cut Lemon, hmm, Pro Cut White Night. I grew the Pro Cut Peach, which to me did not turn out peach. And the flowers weren't the best for me. So I won't grow the Pro Cut Peach again, but I will always grow the Pro Cut Sunflowers. I love them so much. I do stick a few branching sunflowers just for fun and for the birds and the, and the pollinators and things like that in my garden. But mostly the Pro Cuts and the um, Sunflower Steve, his new varieties. Also succession, so my sunflowers. Now, sometimes I get lazy towards the end of the season and I will direct sow in my raised beds some zinnia and some sunflowers. Just I, I count back the days. Zinnia has a turnaround time of usually 75 days from, from the time you plant the seed to bloom. And then your pro cuts are usually 50 to 60 days from the time you plant the seed to bloom. So I just count back the days so they'll have enough time. And sometimes I push the limit before my first frost date arrives, which is usually October 23rd, sometimes a little bit later. But I like to have those going in my garden throughout the entire season. One of the other things that I grew in 2022 is a uh, basket flower. And while it was very unique and the pollinators did love it, I don't think I will grow it again. I did dry some of the little blooms before they turned into the basket flower and they are on my dried flower Christmas tree and I enjoy having those, but I don't think I'm going to take up space. But if you come across basket flower and you have the room, 
then it's a kind of a fun little flower to grow. A couple of warm season tender annual things that aren't necessarily cut flowers for me that I want to give an honorable mention to would be uh, the cup and saucer vine. Now I do have a couple videos here on my channel about how to start the cup and saucer vine and then the progress on the cup and saucer vine and things like that. And I love the cup and saucer vine. I mean, who doesn't love those magical little bell-shaped blooms? They're so, so beautiful. And also the anticipation of the blooms because the cup and saucer vine takes quite a while before it starts blooming. It doesn't start blooming and forming its buds until the end of the season. And I, I really enjoy that anticipation, um, but I don't think I will be growing that this year for the simple reason that I need the space for other things. Now, if you have like an arch trellis someplace and you can give it room to just really grow over that arch and have those bells hanging down, I mean, how fun is that? The vine itself is lovely. It's a very prolific grower and it produces quite a few, uh, quite a few flowers. I did not, I think maybe I used it in one bouquet, um, but it, I don't think the flowers lasted real long for me and I'm sure that's my error. I probably didn't process them correctly to keep them, have them last a little bit longer in the vase but I'm not going to be growing that again, even though I love it so much. The other honorable mention that I want to share with you is the mini pumpkins that I grew. I prepared a space that was about, I think it was 10 by 15. I weeded it down the grass just as tight as I could get it. I covered it with the greenhouse, the black greenhouse fabric on the, on over the grass. I cut holes in the greenhouse fabric. I took my drill and auger and augged down just so I could get some soil up and then I added some compost. Uh, I actually had my grandson sow the seeds for me in the, in the wells uh, for the mini pumpkins and they just did so great. I don't use my pumpkins for food. I give a lot of the mini pumpkins away and use them for decorating and things like that. They lasted until mid-December as far as using them for decorations. So they are definitely on my list. I've grown the mini pumpkins for the last couple years and they are definitely on my list to continue. I think in 2023 I'm going to make a little bit bigger space and grow a little bit larger pumpkin, not a huge pumpkin, but a little bit larger along with my mini pumpkin. If you want a pumpkin to grow in a smaller space, then definitely try the mini pumpkins. I grew a uh, hooligan, Weeby Little, I have grown Jack B. Little, and Mini Harvest Blend it gives you the different, several different varieties in that one blend. You will really enjoy growing mini pumpkins, lots and lots of fun. Going back to the zinnia for just a minute, two that I grew uh, later in the season, I started them later because I wanted them for the autumn time because they're autumn colors, is the Scarlet Red and the Oriole Orange. I really, really enjoyed having both of these in the garden. I grew them in a metal fire ring that I had bought on clearance from Home Depot. I think it was just like three feet across and I really, really enjoyed having those for the autumn bouquets and things like that. They did really well for me. So that's definitely on the repeat for me for 2023. I think I've shared all the warm season tender annuals with you that I grew in 2022. And I'm looking forward to 2023. I hope you are too. Are you getting geared up? You know, getting your seeds and getting your thoughts together for your garden. You don't have to grow as many as I grew or maybe you grow more than I grow. Anyway, it's good to just get out and enjoy our gardens and to grow and to see things come to life. Just, it's just, you can't beat it. Don't forget to join me on Instagram. I post a lot more on Instagram than I do on my YouTube channel. Usually every day or every couple of days I'll post on there. So do join me on there. You can there. find the link to my Instagram account in the about section on the channel here. And usually I put it in the description below and I will put all of this information that we talked about today in the description below as well. Thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye friends.